So which Starlink dish should you purchase for your RV or boat travels? There are two options and we'll explain the key differences. Hi there, I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. And we're with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, where we track mobile internet options for RVers and boaters. This is the third video in a series on Starlink. The first one went over an overview of it and the pros and cons. Our second video went over the data plans, and this one will be going over the equipment that you can purchase from Starlink. Now, Starlink is currently offering for um, appropriate for potential mobile users two different versions of their receiving system. Um, and they are quite substantially different in cost and what you get. And it's important to kind of weigh the, weigh the considerations when you're deciding what to purchase. But the one thing that is in common between the two setups is when you buy them, it is a complete kit. It includes an indoor router, potentially a separate power supply for the flat high performance version, all the cabling you need, and then the outside Starlink receiving system. So it is a full complete kit, and we're going to focus on the main differences, which is the outside receiving piece. Yeah. First up is what they are currently calling the standard dish, which they came out with about two years ago and has kind of been the default option. Yeah, so this Starlink standard is a kind of a um, decently sized rectangle that uh, comes mounted on a stalk. That is kind of the key defining factor of it is it is mounted on a stalk, this rectangle. And when you first power it on, it will point straight up at the sky, spin around, aim, and kind of pick a region of the sky towards it will be then lock its location towards. It doesn't move continuously, but it does have motors in it to auto aim and move when it first sets up. So that is what kind of sets the Starlink standard apart is that aiming system. And it needs to aim because it only has a view of the sky of a hundred degree field of view. So just a little bit over a 90 degree angle. And so it has to find the area where there are the most Starlink satellites for it to track. Otherwise it will have substantial dropout. So that is the Starlink standard system is kind of confined by that. But it, you know, is kind of an amazing amount of electronics in combined into that box that costs just $599. It's a pretty impressive amount of technology to be able to have something that small, um, that affordable, that can track satellites that are whipping by in motion without needing, well, not too long ago, this would have been a $20,000 military type system. So a lot of technology that you can get for that. Now, the, some of the other traits of this $599 smaller Starlink system is the power consumption. It uses between 50 and 75 watts of power continuously while it's on, more while you're uploading. Um, so that is a substantial amount of power. It can use even more power than that if it's um, in a snowy condition and it's automatic ice and snow melter turns on, so it does have a heating element inside it as well. Um, and well, that's basically the Starlink standard. <laughs> All right, they also have the flat high performance dish. You also see it called FHP some places or just HP for high performance. This one costs $2,500 for, so nearly five times the cost of the standard dish. Now, this is a flat mounted dish that goes on top of your RV or boat or uh, whatever vessel you're securing it to. So unlike the standard dish, which has a tripod that you can move around, get out from underneath trees, uh, with the flat high performance dish, because it's permanently mounted on the top of your roof, if you park under a tree and you're having dropouts, you have to move your RV to get away from it. Whereas the standard dish, I think, gives you a lot more flexibility for where you park versus where you actually use the service. Mm -hmm. Now, this dish is substantially larger. It's almost double the size, so about 20 by 22 inches as compared to the 12 by 20 inches of the standard dish. So much larger roof space it's going to be taking up on top of your RV or boat, which could be a concern if you have solar because you also have to take into account that it uses double the power. It's continuous running is somewhere between 100 and 150 watts. That's like running two residential refrigerators. That is a lot of power for internet, a lot more than you're ever going to use for cellular. So that is a major consideration if you do a lot of off-grid uh, non hooked up to shore power sorts of situations. It's not something you're probably going to want to leave on 24 seven, unless you have built in a massive battery bank or you're using your generator nonstop. 
Uh, this dish, however, is authorized for in-motion use. So if you want a dish that is going to be optimized for in-motion use, it has a 140 degree field of view because it doesn't move or set up when you get to a new location. It sees more satellite, it's gonna get through obstructions better, and it's better at that in-motion use. Uh, so if you go with one of the in-motion plans, the priority data on the mobile, mobile plans, the much more expensive, you can use it at highway speeds. You can on the standard as well, it's just at your own risk. Yeah, at your own risk, and the standard is definitely not designed and engineered for dealing with highway wind speeds and being used in motion. So people who do want to use it at highway speeds in motion have come up with some um, pretty significant hacks to remove the motors and the dish and to kind of repackage it so that it can mount flat and will give up some of its field of view, but it will actually work decently in motion that way. But again, you're majorly voiding the warranty Definitely. if you take a Starlink standard and yeah. modify it that way. So those are your two dish options. You have standard at 599 and high performance at $2,500. And Which, one other consideration with both of them is they both use AC power as well and not DC power. So that is another thing to keep in mind that you'll need AC power and an inverter powering them unless you do some pretty significant DC modification hacks as well. All right, so which one should you get? Really depends. Do you want that in-motion use? And do you want that field of view to get a little bit better performance when you're under trees? We think for most, the standard dish is just fine, unless you absolutely need the in-motion use and you don't want to have to do a modification to your dish and void the warranty. Save the money, go with the in-motion one and have that flexibility to move it around where you want. We even mount ours on our boat and it does just fine for in motion use at 10 miles per hour um, without having to reinstall it. So when we're on the boat full time, Starlink's always up on our arch. Here on the van, we only bring it out when we need it. Yeah, and we don't drive down the road with, with it up it on the like pole. That. All right. uh, Starlink has filed with the FCC earlier this year, uh, hints at two new dishes coming in that will be smaller in size. We don't know yet much more about them, if they will be replacing this equipment or it'll just be new options for specialized use. So when those options come out, we'll of course have an updated video uh, going over those to give you some more information on that. But that is the wrap-up of this video series. If you want to follow up, we have a full guide for our members going deeper into the equipment considerations um, that you can go and check out. We have a full resource center on Starlink that has a lot more information on using Starlink with other options, with obstruction finders, and all sorts of stuff that we have documented, and we have a general overview guide. If this is your first video in this series, we do have, of course, the Starlink overview the data plants, and this is the equipment. So make sure you watch all three of these together if you want the full overview of Starlink. <laughs> and it will always be changing, so stay tuned. With Starlink, it will. All right, so thanks for sticking with us, and uh, may the bandwidth be with you. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.